everyone. This is Derek with Reef Automation. This is going to be episode five of the GHL versus Apex series. In this episode, we're gonna go over calibrating the probes for both the GHL and the Apex. So we're gonna first start off with the GHL. In order to calibrate the probes on the GHL, you have to use the front display. Uh, one of the biggest differences between the GHL and the Apex is all the calibration is done from the front display instead of like a phone or instead of uh, an app or something online. So of course, since you have to do it on the display, you got to make sure that if you want it to be in English, that you've set it up via the My GHL or the app in previous episodes for English so you can understand where to go. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the check mark. So it took me a couple hits, but I eventually got to the check mark. You're then gonna go up to sensor settings, and then you're gonna pick the sensor that we're gonna work on. So the first one we're gonna do is the pH. So we're gonna grab our pH electrode, which it comes in the box. Um, what you're going to want to do is just twist off this cover that's on it and it's going to have a little bit of liquid in it. My recommendation is to kind of clean that off and make sure it's nice and clean. So with the BNC connectors, which is what these are, we're going to plug it into the first pH and what you do is you, you push it in and then twist and that's how you get the BNC going. So we got the pH plugged in. We'll keep this uh, holder in case we ever have to store it again. And we're going to need the pH 9 and the pH 7 that comes in the box. So what we'll do is we'll go to pH and then we're gonna go down to calibration. Now it's gonna ask you for calibration tolerance. The first thing is this basically tells you how many years old the probe is. So if it's a year old, you're gonna put one year. This is something interesting that GHL has. So now the first calibration value is the fluid that we're gonna be using first. And for that, we're gonna use seven. So we're gonna set this to seven. And then value two, we're gonna to set to nine because that's what comes in the box. Now these push buttons can be a little touchy. They're not perfect. So once you get to nine, it's then gonna ask you to put it in the fluid. So we're gonna first put it in the seven. Once it's there, you're gonna hit the check mark again. Now once it beeps, that means that it's ready. So we'll take it out of the seven and now it's requesting that we put it in the nine. Now I recommend when you are switching between the two that you clean it Then you're gonna put it in the nine and then you're gonna hit the check button and now it's gonna do the nine. Okay, so once you've got those three beeps again it's ready to go you're going to make sure you go over to save now and yes we'll do that and we'll hit the check mark and now the ph is done so we'll take the ph probe and this is some salt water from my tank so next we're going to calibrate the orp or redox probe now the big difference between GHL and Apex here is on the GHL, they require you to calibrate the probe, whereas in Apex, it's already calibrated from the factory. So we'll hit the check mark, and then we'll go up to sensors again. And this time we'll go to redox, and this time we will go to calibration on the redox. So we'll hit that. Come on. Again, calibration tolerance, basically how old the probe is. We'll hit X, and now it asks for the calibration, which in this case is 220. So we'll hit 220. The buttons are not always perfect here. 
Okay, so we'll plug that guy in. And now we'll do the waiting game again on the ORP. So once you've heard the three beeps, it's gonna ask you to save now. We're gonna go over to the left and hit yes. And then once that's done, we'll take that out and pop it in the water here and get ready for our next probe. Okay, so the next probe we're gonna do is going to be the conductivity probe. So it's glass, so just be really careful with it. You don't want it to break. As you can see, it's very sensitive looking. So just be real careful with it. So same thing, it's a BNC connector. We'll go in the back and where it says conduct or CO C O N D, we'll pop that guy in. We'll get out our calibration fluid for it. And we'll hit the check mark again. We'll go up to sensor settings. We'll go down to conductivity. We'll go up to calibration. Again, it's gonna ask you how long you've had it. Hit check. The calibration fluid we have is 50. Now it's gonna ask you if you want to use the temperature sensor as an offset, so you just hit yes. The temperature of the calibration fluid is roughly 25 degrees Celsius. So now it asks us to hold it in the air. So we'll hold the electrode in the air. Okay, so you wanna hit the check mark once that's done. And then you're gonna pop it into the fluid. And now we wait for the three beeps. Okay, so once you've heard the three beeps, you're gonna have a window that says save now. You're gonna hit yes again. And the conductivity is now complete. So we'll pop that in the water. Okay, so the next one is the temperature sensor. Now, I recommend you picking up one of these digital thermometers. It'll tell you what the temperature is. And right now it's reading about 82.2. And I plugged in the GHL, and the GHL is reading about 79. So it's a little off. Uh, it's reading actually 80 right now. So the only way that you can actually fix this is you actually have to plug in the GHL USB into your computer and then you have to plug in the GHL configuration software. Now the configuration software will also work through IP. So if you know the IP address of your GHL, then you can actually get into it through the Windows PC software. Now the Windows PC software, we're gonna go over in a different episode and I will show you how to do the temperature setting at that point. But this is what you could do to calibrate all the probes on the GHL. It took me roughly 15 to 20 minutes to do all of them. So now we're gonna move on to the apex. Okay, so now we're gonna do the apex. So on the apex, you can actually do the calibration a number of different ways. You could do it through a display that they sell that you plug into the Aquabus. You could do it from an app on the phone or a tablet, uh, Android or iOS. You could do it through a web browser on any computer and you can also do it through the local browser. So what's nice about the Apex is it gives you a number of different ways in which you can do this. So in this uh, tutorial or example, we're gonna do it through an iPhone. So like the GHL, we're gonna start with the pH probe. So the pH probe is blue. And what we'll do is we'll go to the pH probe itself where it says 8.2. We'll click on the little uh, icon on the upper right hand corner, it looks like a gear. And then you'll see at the bottom it says automatic calibration. So we'll first plug it in and the top port is the BNC for the calibration and we'll say automatic calibration. When ready, hit calibrate. It asks for the first solution, which in this case is gonna be seven. So we'll do seven. And now it asks us to put it in the calibration solution. So
So we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll let that sit. And what it's going to do is it's going to settle once it has the correct information. Okay, so now that it's settled, you'll notice that the Apex doesn't give us an audible warning like the GHL. Uh, I do like the GHL gives you a beep um, to let you know when it's ready. So we'll hit next, and now it's going to ask us to put the 10. So we'll get rid of the 7, and now we'll take the 10, and we'll do the same thing. We'll take the probe, swish it around a little bit, and then when you're ready, hit next and we'll let that settle. Okay, so once that's settled, we'll hit next, and we'll say complete, and that is complete. We'll take the probe and put it in our salt water so we can read it later. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is we're going to do the ORP. Now, as we discussed, the ORP is actually pre-calibrated from the factory. So all you need to do is plug it in, and it is also a BNC, and we'll just stick it right in the water because it's already calibrated. There's nothing more that you need to do with it. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is the conductivity. Now, the biggest difference between GHL and a conductivity probe is they use a, a DIN cable instead of the standard BNC. So they have a little slot here at the bottom for the cylinder. You wanna make sure that there's a little arrow on the top of it. You wanna make sure that that arrow points up when you plug this in. You don't wanna bend the small pins at the bottom of it. So once you've done that, we are gonna go up to salt, hit the small gear, and again, we'll hit automatic calibration. And the first thing you need to do is dry it. So it's already dry, it's a brand new probe, so this shouldn't take very long. So we'll let that dry. So that's done, and now we'll hit next and we're gonna open up the calibration solution for the salinity. Now I wanna mention that you'll notice that this solution is not going to work with refractometers. It is strictly meant for calibrating conductivity. So just be aware of that. Uh, furthermore, the same thing for GHL and what they provide is not a refractometer calibration solution. So make sure you only use this with conductivity probes. Okay, so that one is ready to go too. So we'll hit next, we'll say done. We'll take this guy out, throw it in the salt water as well. And now we're gonna move on to our temperature sensor. So the temperature sensor is a standard, it kind of looks like a foam plug, but they, what it's really called is an RJ11 plug. And that is the one big difference between GHL and their temperature probe, is this is an actual foam cord. It's easy to break this little tab on the back and then make the whole thing come loose. So that's the one thing that you have to notice between the two. So we'll plug this guy in, and the tab faces downwards, and we'll stick it in the water. Now, one of the biggest differences between GHL and Apex, not only can you do all of this from the app, but you can also adjust the temperature without an application that GHL requires. So we'll stick in our digital thermometer again and we'll take a look at the reading. And then we will go back to our app and we'll hit the small upper right hand corner icon. And you can adjust the scale here as well if you want to do uh, Celsius. We'll do calibration, and now it basically asks you what's the temperature of the water. So what the temperature is of the water, according to our digital thermometer, is 78.6. So it's going to calibrate to the digital thermometer. So now if you notice, the temperature down there is going to say 78.8, which is exactly the same as our digital thermometer. You'll also notice we have salinity, we also have pH, and we also have ORP. Now the salinity is a little on the high side. Now if you go to the upper right hand corner of the app, and you go to advanced, since we're using a temperature probe, we're gonna to wanna to put a temperature compensation. And typically you'll put 2.2. Now GHL also has this, 
They have a temperature compensation. But again, we're already using the sensor, so it automatically knows that we're using a sensor. Whereas with Apex, you have to give it a temperature factor. So now you'll see that the temperature will be more accurate um, since it's been sitting here for a while. So that's how you calibrate the four probes on the Apex. Now, if we compare the two, it took me roughly, I would say between three minutes and five minutes per probe on the GHL, whereas on the Apex, it took me between 10 seconds and 30 seconds per, for each probe. So uh, in terms of how quickly they calibrate, I found that the GHL calibrates a lot slower than the Apex. Uh, furthermore, as I mentioned, in order to do the calibration on the Apex, you have to have an app. There's no display on here, so uh, the GHL has a display. So there's a couple differences between the two units, but overall we get um, the same calibration, and it seems like they're very accurate because both of the numbers are very close to the same on both units. So in our next video, we're going to start going into some programming. We're going to go into some more basic programming of both units. We're going to go into the beginning programming stages of both units to get these four units calibrated for basic stuff like a heater, uh, possibly a calcium reactor if using pH. And we'll go over alerts and a few other things in our next video. So if you want to take a look at all the different videos that we've done here in the series, just take a look right here. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please go ahead and like the video. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe as well. Look forward to showing you the next episode. Thank you.